Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I'm at Dublin airport and I'm ready to embark on my new adventure to Vienna. You could put some joy upon my face Oh, sun shining in an empty place Take me to turn to And babe, I'll make you stay I just touched down in Vienna and trying to figure out how to get to the city center. Stay with me and I'm gonna show you some tips. First thing first, once you've landed and collected your luggage, head towards the exit signs. Vienna airport is well organized and you'll easily find a way. The cheapest way to get the train from the airport is using a normal OBB ticket vending machine, which is red colored and the price for the ticket is 4 euros. Or it is also possible to buy a ticket at the OBB ticket counter in the arrivals hall. Also, I highly recommend to buy a ticket for a week that will include your staying period. The cost is 17 euros and you can use it unlimited times for all type of the transports in the core zone of Vienna. Another big plus is that if you get a ticket at one of the red OBB ticket machines, you won't have to validate it as the date and time will be already printed on the ticket. The journey was very quick and very comfortable and you can reach the city center in 25 minutes maximum. Finally, I arrived. I'm gonna stay in one of the most unique hotels that you have to see. I'm gonna make a tour for you. I made the check-in and I'm gonna take you with me to explore the city around. Vienna, the capital of Austria and the city of music. When I was thinking about Vienna, I pictured palaces, classical music, the famous opera, Gothic cathedrals, delicious pastries and of course the famous schnitzel. After exploring the old town a bit, I was starving so I headed to a restaurant to have the dinner and I was so excited to be trying the traditional Austrian Wiener schnitzel. It's made from a thinly sliced veal cutlets that are then lightly breaded and pan seared, served with a little bit of lemon juice and a small potato side salad. It was absolutely delicious. Morning everyone. Now I'm gonna make a quick tour during the day. So here I have a coffee machine, which I'll never use because I don't like coffee. I know I'm a weirdo. Uh, this is the bed, sorry for the mess. I really love this light, which gives a very comfortable and cozy atmosphere. And this is the view during the day, which is absolutely beautiful. This is Vienna. Having this view, I could not miss the opportunity to chill on this window before going downstairs for breakfast. Saying that everything was very tasty, it's like saying nothing. From insanely delicious pastries, fruits and salads, to omelette, ham and cheese, everything was incredible. And after such a delicious breakfast, it was time to explore the city. So I went for the first spot. Right now, I'm in front of a building that is very unique. It was designed by an Austrian visual artist and architect, and I'll not be able to pronounce his name correctly, so you're gonna have it somewhere on the screen. Funny thing, because while I was just filming to make great content, I just fell on this path here. Maybe on the video it's not visible, but it's very slippery. And it wouldn't be me if I wouldn't fall. <laughs> Anyways, thank god I didn't injure myself too serious and headed to the next spot. I got a tram and through the window you can see the Austrian parliament. But my next spot was Votive Kirche or Votive Church. When Emperor Franz Joseph survived an assassination attempt in 1853, his brother decided a quick prayer of thanks wouldn't suffice as a suitable expression of gratitude. So he set up an appeal and had this huge votive church built instead. Next on the list is Hat House, a town hall or city hall. It's a massive municipal building built using some 30 million bricks and is now hosting balls, markets and events. And if you are visiting during the winter, you can even do some ice skating. 
Before advancing to the next spot, I decided to fuel up with lunch and to recharge my batteries. And because I'm in Vienna, I could not resist treating myself to another Wiener Schnitzel because it's just too good to pass up. Next on the list is Maria Theresien Platz. That is a square in Vienna city center, mostly known as the location of the twin museums, the Museum of Arts History and the Museum of Natural History. Just a two minute walk from here is the beautiful Hofburg Palace, the former principal imperial palace of the Habsburg dynasty in Austria. Built in the 13th century and expanded several times afterwards, it also served as the imperial winter residence. As things in Vienna move quite fast, don't rush around the city trying to check all of the sites. You will just end up stressed and miss what Vienna is actually all about. And one very important thing to keep in mind. Don't stand on the left side of the escalators and don't stop right after exiting the public transport. People will just run over you if you do that. And they will not even apologize. And this doesn't mean they are rude. It's actually the opposite. I found Austrian people quite nice and friendly, but they just don't have that much time as you do as a tourist. Be mindful, take a walk through the inner city, let your mind wander off and just enjoy the vibe. That's the most beautiful thing about Vienna for me. St. Stephen's Cathedral the beauty of this cathedral is beyond words, so intricate and detailed. Even if there's a 10 euros fee to see some parts of it, the entrance is free. And as it's the most prominent national symbol of Austria, I highly recommend visiting it during your trip to Vienna. And right behind me is something really special, is Johann Strauss statue. Johann Strauss was a famous composer known for his beautiful waltz music. And here in Vienna, he's a big deal. This statue was built to honor him and his incredible contributions to music. When I was in third grade, my music teacher told us about classical music and there was one composer who I remember the most. It was Ludwig van Beethoven. Today I'm standing in front of this big statue of Beethoven remembering those early music classes that made me love music. So here's to Ludwig van Beethoven, the composer who opened my ears to the beauty of classical music. And the next spot for my itinerary is... Belvedere Castle. That is the greatest castle I've ever seen. It's like Versailles in France. Perfect like Versailles are you. The palace was built for Prince Eugene of Savoy, a celebrated military commander. But the Belvedere also houses one of the most iconic artworks of Gustav Klimt, the Keys. This masterpiece, a highlight of the Pels Arts collection, embodies the pinnacle of Klimt's golden period and is a must-see for art enthusiasts visiting Vienna. Shortly after Belvedere Palace, I went to have a pre-dinner if I can say that. Not to eat a cake is like to slap the face of Viennese and all that Vienna stands for. And I decided to try the most famous Viennese dessert, Sacher Torte, a decadent chocolate cake filled with apricot jam and covered in a smooth chocolate glaze. The Sacher Torte is a symbol of Austrian culinary tradition and is enjoyed by people around the globe. Its rich history and fabulous taste have earned it a place among the world's most famous cakes. After such a delicious pre-dinner, I went to the hotel, I took a shower and changed my clothes, got the tram and went probably to the main attraction of Vienna, the Opera State House. There are two options of buying cheap tickets. The first one is to buy it one hour before the show, but you have to stay in this queue and it's not guaranteed that you'll get it. And the second option is to purchase the ticket online eight hours before the show as I did. The price for it was only 12 euros and it was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. The show lasted around two hours, but as it was getting late, with my cultural level increased, I had to leave for dinner. I opted for a grilled fish with beetroot ragu, a glass of Austrian signature white wine Gruner Weltliner, and for dessert I got an insanely delicious homemade cream strudel with vanilla sauce. And lastly, I went to a place right beside the opera house to try the famous Austrian Frankfurter Wurstel. After all, it would be a sin not to try it. Yummy!
To answer the first question, I can say it with all my heart that Vienna is totally worth visiting. Whatever place you'll go, you will feel welcomed because everybody speaks English. Plus, the food is incredibly delicious. As I had a very early flight and there are no trains that operate during the night, I had to get the bus from the central station that is 4 minutes of walk from the hotel. And by the way, you don't have to worry if you don't have the ticket booked in advance, as you can pay by card right in the moment when you are hoping on the bus. Good morning and bye Vienna. You were lovely, so see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you want to see how to do a day trip from Vienna to Bratislava, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching and see you soon, okay? Bye!